Exercise regularly. You don't need me to tell you the importance of physical exercise for your physical health, but physical exercise also provides the key to building and maintaining your resilience, improving your mental performance, and taking care of your brain over time. And I think there are three things to consider here. Number one, light exercise and what that does to your brain. Number two, vigorous exercise and what additional that does to your brain. And number three, just thinking more about movement on an ongoing basis. When you move, even lightly, what you do typically is increase blood flow. And as circulation increases, you get more blood coming to your brain. And with it, it brings oxygen and glucose. So already you can see why even light exercise tends to correlate with improved mental performance and sharpness because you've got more resources pumping around your brain and consequently you become more productive and improve your mental performance. Also, as you exercise, you tend to produce more myokines, which are really peptides that enable you to feel better. It improves your mood, reduces anxiety, and that also contributes to the association we have with exercise and resilience. So think about that. Thinking about light exercise and ideally every day, what could you change, maybe starting tomorrow, to improve your relationship or the number of minutes you spend on an average day or an average week engaged in light activity? I try and go for a walk, Victoria Park down the road from me every day. I don't manage it every day, but I do notice every day that I do the significant benefit it has for me. Not just my performance and my kind of cognitive acuity, but also my well-being and, I would argue, my creativity. I don't know if you've ever had a good idea come to you on a walk, but reliably we do tend to associate this more wandering mind as you go for a walk with creative insights. So that's the first thing to think about. How can you get more regular activity, go for more walks, do light level activity every day if you can? Okay, so now what happens when you exercise more vigorously? When you engage in cardio and you exercise more vigorously for 20 or 30 minutes, what also happens is your brain starts to produce a protein, BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And as you might already know, that's the protein that enables your brain to learn. We associate it with neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. So that's one of the reasons perhaps why we associate exercise with a reduction in the chance of developing Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia. And why, when you think about the relationship between exercise and learning and adaptability, another reason why physical exercise is so good for your resilience. So the research here suggests that maybe two or three times a week will be optimum. So now over to you. What versions of cardio do you already do or do you enjoy that you can start to incorporate into your life maybe twice or three times a week that, in all, that enable you to get more BDNF and more of these amazing proteins pumping around your brain. Think of it like fertilizer for your brain. Is it cycling? Is it running? Is it other cardio activity? Think about it now. And what, again, specifically could you start doing differently starting next week? Okay, and then the final consideration, I think, is to discuss more the role of movement. When we think about exercise, it's easy to think about kind of practices or classes or activities that start and end. I'd also encourage you just to think about movement on an ongoing basis throughout your typical day, because that's when you realize you can just take five minutes here or 10 minutes here, a short high intensity interval training exercise, or even just doing some press ups while the kettle boils, you realize actually your access to activity is abundant and ongoing. So now what are some things that you could maybe strategically work into your average day that enable you just to kind of increase this sense of circulation, oxygenating your brain and making sure that your body and your mind are primed for activity, right? I think often we forget we are biological creatures. Of course, we have our minds and our brains and our thoughts, but often I think we lose sight of the fact that how much that thrives 
if we also remember to move enough. So hopefully this has been useful as a reminder and maybe some insights for you to change your behavior going forward. What I'd now encourage you to do, just get maybe two columns on a bit of paper and just have a bit of a brainstorm. What could your ideal day look like? When we think about a morning walk, remember getting that 20 minutes of light activity in, as well as your little moments of activity, your sort of cheeky five minutes here or 10 minutes here. What could an ideal day look like? And to what degree can you work that into a routine? Morning routine, lunchtime routine, what can you do there to increase your minutes per day? And then I want you to consider what your ideal week might look like thinking more about the more vigorous activity, the cardio, the sessions that enable you to work up a sweat and consequently take care of your brain over time.